On a tranquil night in May of the year 2000, the serene suburb of Adelaide was shattered by a heinous act that would stain its history. As residents slumbered, blissfully unaware of the evil creeping in the darkness, two lives were being snuffed out, those a loving mother and her bright-eyed daughter. 33-year-old Rosemary Brown and 15-year-old Melissa Brown had fallen on hard times. Evicted from their home at the Windsor Gardens Carevan Park due to unpaid rent, they drifted from place to place, their only shelter being the kindness of friends. On that fateful night, they had taken refuge in a caravan loaned to them by an associate, trying to catch their breath before life's next tribulation. But life had one more cry in store for Rosemary and Melissa. They would never again see the dawn of a new day. Sometime during that night, an act of unspeakable violence was unleashed upon them, cutting short their lives and futures. As day broke, the disappearance of the mother and daughter was discovered. But this was only the beginning of the harrowing mystery. What happened to them? Where were their bodies? So find a cozy spot, grab your favorite detective hat, and join us on this gripping expedition into the Brown's tragic case. As we unravel the threads of this tangled web, you'll be left on the edge of your seat, craving more. Hi guys and welcome back to Crimeco, where we break down some of the most gruesome true crime cases from all over the world, giving you the most up-to-date detailed information. If that sounds like something you are interested in, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to give this video a like. A like from you really helps the channel. Thank you. Now let's dive in. The tranquil suburb of Adelaide where Rosemary and Melissa spent their final night was called Windsor Gardens. Nestled 12 kilometers north of the city, it was known as a friendly, working-class area dotted with caravan parks that provided affordable housing. This caravan park community became home to the Browns after they fell on financial hardship. But Rosemary strived to create a stable life for her children Nathan and Melissa, working multiple cleaning and landscaping jobs to keep them fed and sheltered. Though only 33, she carried the weight of the world on her shoulders. Raised by a single mother herself, Rosemary understood the importance of kinship. Her devotion to her children was deep and unrelenting. Melissa and Nathan meant everything to her. Melissa, a cheeky tomboy who loved animals and the outdoors, inherited her mother's fiercely protective spirit. Though only 15, she became Rosemary's fierce defender, her closest friend and confidant. Nathan formed the final piece of their close-knit family. At 11 years old, he brought spark and laughter into their lives. His childlike innocence grounded Rosemary and Melissa, reminding them of the simple joys of life. Though poor in money, the Browns were rich in love, but this love would be tested time and again. Their precarious finances left them vulnerable, barely scraping by, uncertain where their next meal would come from. Still, Rosemary worked tirelessly to shield her children from the hardest impacts of poverty. But fate had different plans. Unable to afford the rent on their caravan, eviction notices were soon slapped upon the Browns' door. Rosemary persuaded the landlord to allow them a bit more time, but his patience soon wore thin. By May 7, 2000, the family was forcibly removed, their belongings tossed to the curb. Homeless and adrift, the Browns relied on others for shelter. An associate who owned a caravan allowed them to briefly take refuge on his plot of land at the Windsor Gardens Caravan Park. But here too, they overstayed their welcome getting kicked out after a mere three days. Once again, the Browns found themselves wandering the streets, desperately needing a place to weather the storm. Rosemary refused to let her family sleep on the gritty concrete. Instead, she secured temporary lodging in the most unlikely of spots, the backyard of a friend's home in the suburb of Blair Athol. This modest house on Help Street would become the site of the Browns' final stand a last attempt to cling to dignity before misfortune inevitably pulled them under again. At least here, for a little while, Rosemary and her children could have four walls around them, 
blocking out the chill of the impending southern winter. If only the coldness of humanity could be kept at bay too. The night of May 12, 2000 was a tense one for the Browns. Though they had secured lodging at the Help Street House in Blair Athol, uncertainty still plagued their future. Rosemary wore the stress of their precarious situation plainly on her face as she gathered with loved ones in the cramped caravan. She could barely force a smile even with her children by her side. Eleven-year-old Nathan picked up on the strain radiating from his mother. Always attuned to her emotions, he sensed something amiss. Still, he tried his best to keep the mood light, joking around with family members late into the evening. He was unaware this would be the last night of normalcy with his mother and sister. As midnight approached, Nathan decided to spend the night at a friend's home nearby, giving Rosemary and Melissa some privacy. This small act of selflessness would inadvertently spare him the same tragic fate about to befall his loved ones. He said his goodbyes, leaving his mother and sister in the caravan, hoping tomorrow would bring happier times. But when Nathan returned the next morning, Rosemary and Melissa were gone without a trace, never to be seen alive again. Immediately, panic arose at their sudden disappearance. Rosemary was a devoted mother, she would never abandon her children willingly. She and Melissa were clearly in some kind of trouble, but what? A frantic search ensued, but all pleas to locate the missing females fell on deaf ears. Rosemary's handbag was found discarded on a Northfield street later that day, emptied of its contents. This concerning clue indicated foul was likely involved, but still, no further signs of Rosemary or Melissa emerged. As days turned to weeks, hopes of finding them unharmed slowly faded. What began as a disappearance was now being investigated as an abduction and possibly a double homicide. But with no bodies, no eyewitnesses, and no forensic evidence, authorities had little to go on. They could not even pinpoint the exact time or location of the presumed murders. The investigation pressed forward, considering all possibilities. Police questioned known associates of Rosemary, including those in her social circle at the Windsor Gardens Caravan Park, but no clear suspect emerged. With almost nothing to go on, the case gradually went cold. Agonizing weeks turned to months. Still no clues emerged as to the whereabouts of the missing mother and daughter. Rosemary's young son, Nathan, could scarcely process the loss, staying with relatives as his life was appended. The bubbly teenager Melissa, who had her whole future ahead of her, was now feared dead at the tender age of 15. What finally led to a breakthrough in the case was a grim discovery made by a bushwalker two months after the disappearances. On July 2, 2000, among the mangroves of Garden Island, what was left of Rosemary Brown was found. Melissa's location remained a mystery, but authorities presumed she met the same tragic fate. The discovery of Rosemary Brown's remains brought both relief and concern to investigators. It marked a breakthrough in an unsolved case, but the condition of her state posed troubling questions. Rosemary's presence was not found intact, what's left of her was separated, with some parts scattered in the mangroves. This raised concerns of a and possibly a crime. Authorities conducted a thorough search in the Garden Island region, hoping to find any additional evidence related to Melissa. Over several weeks, specialized police divers extensively searched the waters, yet they did not locate what's left behind of Melissa. Detectives speculated that those responsible for these acts had placed both bodies in the remote mangrove area. However, it was possible that wildlife had moved what's left of Melissa making it impossible to determine the cause of her death without their recovery. Still, authorities presumed the missing teenager was terminated alongside her mother. Why else would a 15-year-old girl vanish without a trace? Melissa adored her family. She would never abandon her mother and brother willingly. A seemed the only likely explanation. But by who and where did the initial crime occur? Police surmised the unthinkable happened shortly after Rosemary and Melissa 
left their temporary lodging at Helt Street in Blair Athol on the early morning of May 13. They set out on foot around 2.30 a.m., reportedly searching for Nathan after an argument. Perhaps they crossed paths with their s**ers during this late-night walk. Or maybe their perpetrators were closer than anyone realized, someone they knew and trusted. With so little evidence, any theory was possible. Detectives dug deeper into the last movements of Rosemary and Melissa, interviewing their inner circle, but no one stood out as a key suspect. Whoever committed these acts did so discreetly, leaving few ripples. With no signs of a struggle, police considered if the victims were coaxed away under false pretenses. The disposal of Rosemary's empty handbag pointed towards a deliberate attempt to delay discovery of play. But try as they might, investigators could not pin down where the lead events transpired. How were two females so easily spirited away in the night, without raising alarm? The lack of eyewitnesses stymied police. Yet someone, somewhere in the city knew what happened. Authorities hoped time would loosen lips. Allegiances fade, consciences weigh heavy. Perhaps guilt would eventually provoke a confession. But years passed without a revelation. Melissa and Rosemary's demise joined the scores of cold cases gathering dust in police archives. Still, authorities refused to have the investigation fade fully from public memory. In a dramatic move, the mother and daughter's story was emblazoned on the face of playing cards distributed in prisons across the region. This kept their names circulating among inmates, hoping for a long-awaited breakthrough. Additionally, substantial rewards were offered for any information leading to Melissa's recovery or a conviction in either cases. But even this failed to lure definitive leads. The case seemed determined to remain frozen in time. Yet there are some who insist the fog will one day lift. Advances in forensic science may succeed where traditional sleuthing fell short. For now, the fateful night that claimed Rosemary and Melissa remains obscured in shadows. But the light of truth cannot be dimmed forever. The lack of progress in solving Rosemary and Melissa Brown's murders has not been for lack of trying. In the two decades since the grim discovery of Rosemary's remains, investigators have continually revisited the case, hoping fresh eyes can spot previously overlooked clues. The most intensive review came in 2004, when the case was once again in the spotlight. Let's examine what new insights were gleaned from this analysis. A core aspect investigators revisited was Rosemary Brown's social connections, especially at the Windsor Gardens Caravan Park where she resided. Who were her closest confidants there? Could anyone confirm her movements in the days preceding her death? One name that again surfaced was Mark Nichols, a Caravan Park resident who allegedly allowed the Browns to take shelter on his property after their first eviction. However, Nichols denied any involvement, claiming he last saw Rosemary when she voluntarily left his caravan. Still, suspicion lingers around him. As an owner of a caravan where the Browns briefly stayed, he had opportunity and Rosemary's body was found near where this caravan was parked, just 10 kilometers from her final known location. Yet, with no witnesses or evidence, Nichols remains just one of many persons of interest. The reinvestigation also took a closer look at the disposed site of Rosemary's remains, the Garden Island mangroves. Why transport her body over 10 kilometers from Blair Athol to this location? Did the have a connection to this specific area. The mangroves are remote but public, risky to access at night, but also deserted. The killers likely felt at home in this environment, familiar with its secluded nature. Local knowledge may have guided their selection of this drop point. The condition of Rosemary's body was also re-examined. The dismissal pointed to vicious intent, over beyond homicide. But why the body after death. What fueled such savagery? These questions still disturb investigators today. Re-interviewing those close to Rosemary also unveiled her fearful state of mind just before her death. Unemployed and homeless, 
she confided in friends that she felt unsafe and like someone was watching her family. Perhaps these cryptic fears were early premonitions of the threat encroaching, or simple paranoia brought on by extreme stress. Either way, Rosemary seemed aware of a lurking myth in those final fearful days. Reviewing Melissa Brown's background also exposed concerning elements. As a teenager, she had brushes with and things before. She willingly walked alone at night through risky areas. Though clearly a doting daughter, she also had a rebellious side. Might this dangerous streak have led her into the crosshairs of local predators? Records showed run-ins with biker gangs and dealers. While not evidence of guilt, these associations raised eyebrows. Ultimately, the 2004 reinvestigation brought no concrete breakthroughs. But it did reinforce that someone in Adelaide knows what happened. Too many eerie questions linger. The answers dwell in the city's psyche, waiting to be coaxed out. The keys to cracking this enduring mystery still elude police today. However, justice has a way of asserting itself with time. While the case remains cold, hope persists that the truth will ignite once again. Before you leave, please be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell. This will ensure you stay informed about the latest true crime cases we uncover. We're grateful to have you as part of our community, as we explore the captivating mysteries that continue to fascinate us all. Stay curious and vigilant that even closed books still hold untold pages waiting patient revelation. Thank you for joining us, and we eagerly anticipate seeing you in our next exploration. Until next time.